So having discussed geometric vectors and then polynomials and functions, it is now time to talk about Rn, sets of n numbers. In this video, our examples will come from R3, triplets of numbers. And one can only marvel at how different these three kinds of objects are. We started with directed segments. Then we talked about funny symbols on a piece of paper. And now we're talking about sets of numbers. These examples couldn't be any more different. And it's amazing that these three types of objects are part of the same subject and part of the same course. But of course they are, because we're now focusing on what these different objects have in common. And it's our ability to add them together and multiply them by numbers to produce another object of the same kind. Now eventually, we'll spend a lot of time with Rn. The importance of Rn is threefold. Computers love Rn because computers love numbers. So if you want to take advantage of computers, you better translate your problem, whatever its origin, whether it's directed segments, polynomials, or anything else, you better translate it into numbers. In other words, elements of Rn. Uh, algorithms of linear algebra love Rn. And finally, when we study component spaces, we'll realize that all vector spaces are in a very real sense equivalent to Rn. So by studying Rn, we're actually studying all of the vector spaces in the same time, albeit in a rather dry way. Dry, but effective. So in this video, we'll talk about two things. The really obvious thing, how to add these objects together and multiply them by numbers. Of course, there's only one natural way of doing it, so I don't know if this would be a revelation to anyone. And then we'll have the same discussion we had before about polynomials, which is getting off the plane that you're stuck on. All right, first, let's figure out how to add these objects together. And once again, it couldn't be any more straightforward when you add two elements of Rn together. All you really have to do, and that's the definition, is to add them entry by entry. So the result of adding these two vectors will be another element of R3, more generally Rn, with entries minus one, nine, minus three. <laughs> minus one, and that was more challenging than I thought it would be. Nine, minus three. Now let's multiply one of these elements by a number. Pick a number, seven, one of my favorites. And the result is, well, when you multiply an element of R3 by a number, you have to multiply every entry of that triplet by the same number. So we get 28, oh, I'm glad I picked zero, and, oh boys, 84, 84. So that's all there is to it. That's all there is to adding elements of Rn and multiplying them by numbers. And once again, it's abundantly clear that the crucial requirements such as commutativity, associativity, and distributivity are satisfied. So we have bona fide vectors on our hands and we'll talk about elements of Rn as vectors from now on. So this part of the presentation is completely straightforward. Now let's discuss the point that I promised, which is being stuck. Uh, just as a quick reminder, of course, the inspiration comes from geometry, where if you choose any two vectors in the same plane, well, they're always in some plane. So no matter what you do to them in terms of adding them together and multiplying them by numbers, you will not be able to get out of this plane. You're stuck in this plane. Now, can vectors in R3 be stuck in a particular subset of R3? And the answer is, of course, yes, in a myriad of ways. Now, this particular example, craftily, uh, chooses one of those ways. Now, if you just look at these vectors, can you identify the property that all of these vectors share? And in fact, make it such a property that it cannot possibly be broken by adding two vectors that have that same property or multiplying a vector like that by a number. And that property is, you can pause the video if you want to think about it yourself, and that property is that the last entry is three times the first entry. Do you see how this last entry is three times the first entry? 
Well, when we added the vectors together, that property was preserved. This entry is three times this entry. When we multiplied this vector, which had that property, by a number, this time seven, but of course it doesn't matter, the result was another vector where the last entry was three times the first entry, even though that's not so obvious to see, but of course it is. 84 is 28 times three. So we're stuck. We're stuck within that set where the last entry is three times the first entry. So by geometric analogy, we will call that a subspace. Just like a plane is a subspace of the entire space, the word space is geometric, subspace is a play in words on the word space, and this we will also call the subspace of R3. Even though, like I said before, in the case of polynomials, there is absolutely nothing geometric about this space. These are triplets of numbers. If you have some association between geometric vectors in space and triplets of numbers, I invite you to break that association. We'll rebuild it later in a more correct way, but for now you should forget about that linkage. And if you do, you will think of triplets of numbers as one of the most abstract sorts of things you can imagine. Triplets of numbers, not something that you encounter in real life. So, uh, inspiration comes from geometry, terminology comes from geometry. And even though this example of being stuck in this subspace is not at all geometric in any way, pure algebra, maybe even pure arithmetic. We can't help but have the geometric picture of two vectors in a plane. So that's what I wanted to mention about uh, R3, which actually parallels our discussion about polynomials and of course parallels our discussion about geometric vectors. All of our discussions will parallel each other. That's the spirit of linear algebra, to equally apply to very different kinds of objects by focusing on what those objects have in common, addition and multiplication by a number. But notice how our parallel discussions happened. Even though our discussions were completely parallel, they were native to each of the spaces. When we talked about geometric vectors, we used words like planes, uh, straight lines, space, lengths, and so forth. We use geometric types of discussions. When we talked about polynomials being stuck, we talked about their coefficients, their roots, their graphs, only the sorts of things that you can do with polynomials and functions. Vectors don't have coefficients, graphs, or roots, and neither do R3, elements from R3. And now when we're talking about R3, all we can really talk about is entries because all we have is a collection of numbers and these are and there's individual numbers are called the entries of an element of R3 or entries of a vector in R3 and we said the last entry is three times the first entry because we can't talk about their lengths we cannot talk about angles we cannot talk about planes we cannot talk about graphs we cannot talk about coefficients we cannot talk about roots so even though the discussions were analogous and underscored the same essence, the same linear algebra essence of these three different types of objects, the discussions were completely native. And that's what I'll talk about in the video in which I call upon everyone to treat all objects on their own terms. Meanwhile, this completes our discussion of RN for now.